going back to to Dave Bickler because obviously he had medical issues after um, Caught in the Game album came out, and obviously issues with his throat and things like that. Um, oh, he left. Jimmy, Dave did. Dave, Dave did. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He did. He did. Yeah. yeah, so but what was the decision in terms of him leaving the band? Um, was it a management thing? Was it you guys? Was it you him? Me to be, do you want me to be, like, brutally honest with you? Because I could do that. Go for it. <laughs> I had absolutely no hesitation, no problem, no, well, let me think about it, with, with replacing Dave. None. None. You want me to tell you why, in my opinion? Mm-hmm. Give a fuck all you friends and lovers and haters and all that shit out there. You, he wasn't the front man we needed. That's important. Don't forget at the time you had my friend Lou Graham out there. You had Steve Perry. Out. You got to have a fucking front man. He wasn't a front man. He was not. And then two, you have to have endurance to do that job. You know, talk to Steve Perry sometimes about it. Look at what Bruce Springsteen just went to. It's hard. I'm like, Bruce, you can't do three-hour shows when you're like 70 years old. I love him, but Dave never had the endurance to do that. It's hard. When I went to, used to go see Jerry, because, you know, Steve Perry, I like him, and he had a really great attitude. And he had that whole lead singer thing where, like, because he just wanted to be the singer, and he became the star. The rest of the guys hated him. And, man, the usual story. <laughs> I'm like, you know, that's how it's going to be. Told Jameson, these guys are going to hate you in a year, but don't pay attention to it. But I had no, I was relieved. I was really happy. And for a, a few weeks, we didn't have a singer. I was like, I don't care. It was better. I, I, I felt innately, I don't know why, I don't know what the fuck it was, but I felt like this is better than what we had going on because what we had going on was dark there's a lot of drugs involved and i never i'm not a drug guy and i don't whatever teach his own there's a lot of fucking conniving and it was dark and i just said this is bullshit i want we need a guy that could fucking a good looking guy that can sing the shit out of our songs that we write and i look around and i go like steve Perry, you know these guys are fucking great it's hard to find someone Jimmy came in. By the way, then he has to be the first guy we audition. And the first guy, and I'm like, this is, here my, here's my brain. This is fucking unbelievable. We were rehearsing in a carpet, the part of a carpet warehouse that we own in right. Chicago. And he comes in. He's the first guy. It's Jimmy. It's Jameson. I'm like, this can't be fucking real. Then they're like, we should try other people. Like I'm like, what? What? What is it? I don't give a fuck if he, they want it. So we did for like a week and a half or two weeks. And I kept going. So I tell the road crew, my brother was on the road crew, a friend of mine from that I'd known since freshman year. And I'm like, man, where the fuck get? So one day, it was a Friday. I finally got, and I didn't get this. I got pissed off. I said, you guys, what? Fuck you. You could either get the guy from Memphis back or then look for another guitar player too. That's how strong I felt about Jameson. And in the meantime, the other guys don't know that I like to keep like really smart people like Ron Nevison. He's a fucking genius, man. It's, it's a hard job to produce records. I sent him cassette tapes at rehearsal. of like, high on you, broken promises. What do you think of the guy? The guy sounds fucking great. What's he like? I said, he's a great guy. Why aren't I? So I finally said, look, we either get the guy back from Memphis or look for another guitar player because this is going to go on forever. Ron said he'll do the record, but he's at the same time. He's Ron back then, like four. Everybody wanted him. He's telling me on the phone, I have other projects to do. And that's kind of scary because he did. <laughs> so we got him back and he came in. And I found out that the road crew would never let him leave town. <laughs> My brother Kevin and Rick, the tour manager, no. He stayed in Chicago with his whole time in a hotel and he went out drinking, having a good time, eating dinner and stuff with the crew until we fucking got our brains, our heads out of our butt and said, where is this guy? And they said, you're lucky because we've kept him in town. I was like, hey, my heart went, oh, God, thank God. <laughs> he was fucking Jimmy, man. Badass. He's a badass, man. He was so fucking good. I don't know why it would have, I don't know why there would be anything other than Good stuff about the Jimmy Jamison story. We're lucky. We were lucky they kept him in town. 
He tries off first, we'll just say fine, it's his God, whatever you want to call it, and we're done. First guy, and get out with it, but you got to go to bands. Man, let's spend two weeks looking for You got the, you know, Kevin, we got this Kevin Shelfont guy, and I never knew him. One of Jim's friends, I said, that's enough. What, when we start trying out fucking friends that are nowhere near good enough, as, as, as much less as good as Jimmy Jameson, then I'm done. It was a whole thing. I'm like, can we just fucking get on with it? And then we got on with Vital Signs. And Jimmy became a star in about a week. Yeah. Jimmy was really good, man. I'm telling you, then maybe he sang a track twice at the most. Wow. Ron would say, or when I'd work with him myself, like, uh, Man Against the World. Ever since the war began, it's, I swear, one take, and I said, just sing your second verse. And it's so good, we get to do the record. Even Ron goes, Ron. My ear, he goes, well, what do you want me to do with this? I said, he goes, then I teach you enough. He goes, listen to it. I said, but it's my little drum machine. There's a fuck about the drums, man. Listen to the fucking lyrics, the way this guy sings. And Jimmy had great clarity, so you could, un- this is a gift, too. You could understand every single word he sang. I told Jim one time, we're looking at gift horse in the mouth because if you want to be a prick about it, he's a songwriter's dream. You can understand every word. Where's with Dave? You got to go, what's that word? You know, Jimmy was just special guy, man. Amazing guy. Amazing guy. He just got into some stuff that wasn't all that good for him. That's all. Which happens. It happens, man. But I fucking miss him, man. He's fucking great. Yeah. That's lucky to be a balance. He's every bit as good as Steve Perry, and that says everything I need to you need to know because I'm a huge Steve Perry fan. A bit later on, obviously reunion tours and things like that. You got Dave and Jimmy together, didn't you? With yeah. with the band. Yeah. So, so how did all that come about? Whose idea was it? And did you have to talk anyone into it, or was everyone on board from the start? Yeah, that's, it was my idea, but I, man, dude, I don't think it was my one of my better ideas. I don't know what I think. I I just loved to play those the hits live to the fans and audience. I just thought, yeah, both of them, you could really do everything. You know, so and if you think about the purity of that thought, it's a really good thought. But the reality is always, <laughs> you must know about reality. You don't have to be me. The reality can differ with what we think sometimes. Um, it never really worked because the differences, and they got on really good but the difference is between those two guys that wasn't very healthy for Dave that was not good for him to be in with Jimmy and that's just it's a hard gig man the fucking guys he's a hard act to follow when you're playing a show man and you look over and Steve Perry comes to your fucking show your singer's a fucking great singer okay or he don't come to shows all the time he said to me one time Steve Perry goes to me man that guy he turned sideways. He goes, the only thing he's missing that I got is this schnoz. You know, Steve Perry said, yeah, he did. He said that to me once. I said, that's a huge compliment. He goes, yeah, it is. So, you know, it was hard. For, it was hard for Dave because then you have a guy that's really great on the stage with the audience and audience friendly. And then, then he, Dave's kind of timid. It just, it, it put the spotlight on both of them, and one of them it was good for, the other one it wasn't good for. So I said, this isn't going to work. And Jimmy always told me, just find a young guy that looks like me, man, that can sing all the fucking hits, man, because the fucking keys are getting high and stuff. I said, Jimmy, you sing the full mouth. I'm just saying, man. And then we did. And Cameron came into the picture. That That didn't work that good. I don't think that was healthy for Dave. I don't. I just don't. Yeah.